farther down the line that he's looking to bless you. Amen. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Father, you've been good to us this day, Lord God. We know that it is your hand that's been upon us. We ask for the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh God. Father, you know all things. You know the hearts of man, the matters of man's heart. Lord God, that is you know how to fix it, and you know just the words that is in need. God, it's your words that is the words of life, and we will bless your name forever and ever. God, there's nobody like you, and it's you who have brought us this far. So, Lord God, we continue to look and depend on you, Lord God, that as you are blessed that of this house and all that they are in, Lord God, that as you will have your way, give us the ears to hear, Lord God. Use us, Lord God, as vessels that is what is uh, pleasing unto you, Lord God. And our hearts is mended even in this of your truth so that you may get the glory and the honor. For there's nobody like you, Lord. There's none besides you. You are holy. You are all by yourself. You're the Lord our God. For there's nobody like you. And this we will bless and praise your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How we feeling? Y'all going to have to keep it real with me now. All these nerves, I got to shake it all off now. Y'all going to have to keep this thing real with me. I need some, I, I want y'all to be able to interact with me with some of this. So I kind of want to see where we all are. So when my mind said, when I am looking to get the interaction of the people here, and there's certain things that I know that it comes down to when um, we look at the church, when we look at the church, and sometimes you want to know what the world says about the church, right? You want to know what it is that they think about us at times. And sometimes they hijack it. Sometimes they hijack our sayings, our things, right? I hear some of them, I mean, some of the younger guys, they, I think they still say it. They'll say, preach. I'm like, that, that's our stuff. Don't be trying to take that. Marriage. Right? Some of this stuff is where they love to hijack. Right? So how about the things that they are not willing to hijack? Are we still speaking those things and declaring it? Right? It's, and I mean, some things we don't want to go all in depth with because sometimes we traditionally have gone about things. Right? So when we say sin, they ain't talking about sin. Amen? Sin is a whole nother level. They don't want to take that. That's, that's a whole nother type of understanding. Right? So my opening up as far as, in a sense, wanting to search the minds and the hearts of, what, of the people and the hearers is, what is the worst sin? What do you feel is the worst sin? I want to hear some outtake on some of it. I want to hear somebody kind of, what is, are some of the worst sins that you would consider? And this is just the mindset. I want to hear where your hearts and what you think. It's a reason why I ask, too. Anybody? Not believing in God, amen. Hmm? What's that out? Life? Life? Who? Hmm? Taking of life, oh, amen. You talking about taking of life? Blasphemy, amen. Yeah, blasphemy. <laughs> Can you? So, and then you're right when it comes down to certain, it'll go into it, but yeah, so. We got, and I, I want the reason why I asked it because I want to hear how that we think. Because we know how the Jews had thought about certain sins when it was man born of sin, when it was some of those things that they had a different approach to people when it came down to it, right? So, and some of my conclusion on certain thoughts is unrepented sin. Like, unrepented is now, if it comes to your knowledge, you have rejected to repent. You chose to do your own thing or go your own way. So when I look at sin, some things comes out a lot different than when it is that when somebody is actually interacting with people. Because now we look at man. All of us is made in sin. We are. Whether we know it or not, sometimes we tend to forget ourselves that we are still somewhat in this sinful state, right? So, so I kind of want to open it up with that because I believe that the Jews had a mindset. So let's go. To, I want to. I want to kind of show how I want to do this. I want to show where the things where it generates the sin, as far as the heart. All right. I guess I'll just jump right into it because my mindset is. All twisted, but so if when we look at, let's just go to it. Let's go to uh, 
was it? Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17, and I think I want to go verse 9. No, it was verse, was it Jeremiah 17? Yes. Verse 9, yeah. And it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and depart, uh, de desperately wicked. Who can know it? It didn't say that God didn't know it. It said who? That, that includes you. It gets more personal, right? It's, it's, God knows all things, right? We know that he's a searcher of the heart. So here it is. It's who can know it? Even your own self. Who can know your own heart as deceitfully above all things? And we find ourselves in places where it is that we think that we probably better than others. We start to measure up with other people, right? So let's go. And the lesson that I'm actually coming from, I'm, I'm actually going to be bouncing around some, but the lesson that I'm coming from is Matthew 13. We're going to go there. This, it's about the sower. About the sower. And now what I want to really kind of, I want the scripture, I want the spirit of the word to come to life to us. I, want, I don't want to suggest to read certain, read it like a novel, like a good book. I want the spirit of the word to come to life when it is that I'm doing my study in the soul. And so here it is. I'm kind of going to break it down. 13, uh, I'm going to start off with th verse 1, but I want to jump all the way back to 12. So it says, the same day when Jesus went out to the house, out of the house and sat by the seaside. Now, it said the same day. What does it mean the same day? I kind of dissected a lot, uh, a lot. So we go to verse twelve. Here it is on the twelve, on the, uh, verse twelve, number one, uh, verse one uh, of Matthew, and it says, "At that time Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were and hungered, and began to pluck the ears of the corn of corn and eat them, eat to eat." Now it's on the Sabbath, and I said, "What's the worst sin?" There are certain things, like I said, when it comes down to the Jews. What was the thing that they really had a problem when it came down to Jesus? On the Sabbath. It was something they would not let go. They have so many traditional hundreds of laws against that. And Jesus, here it is. It wasn't no so happenstance. Jesus literally on the Sabbath did it purposely, intently. All these miracles and so on. So here it is on the Sabbath day he chose. That, that was one of the things along with him making himself equal to God, right? So they have this major problem. So when we look at some of the miracles in uh, uh, chapter 12, he's doing miracles. They, 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 the, the craziest thing is that the people, the Pharisees, the Pharisees and the scribes was always around the other Jews. So when Jesus is teaching, what are they doing? Hating. They are hating. They are coming about trying to take down every single thing that, that Jesus was teaching to where it is that it's almost like it comes down to the parable of the sower. And I, I'm going to bounce around, like I said, because I want to kind of make it. It should come all together in the end. But, but here it is. They was making sure that the people didn't believe God, didn't believe Jesus and his teaching. So when he was going around doing miracle after miracle, and this is the same day. Now, this is, to me, this is almost like the recording of the longest day. This is like two verses, two chapters that Jesus is going through, and it's the long day. It's a long day. Now, Jesus is man like us, he, he, a human like us. He get tired. He got tired. There's things that we can always pl uh, probably have, uh, you say, uh, excuses to, uh, to decide not to come, not to go. I have, I have my own situations that I have that... Many things unfold, and my own convictions, I'm here today, but I'm grateful for the mercies of God now, and the grace of God is the reason why I'm here. But, but certain things are my own decision. These are the matters of the heart. I, I've decided I'm going to be here. I've had some folks try to talk me out of it with the situations that I'm going through, but, but it's more so to the point it was something more so convicting in my own self. So here it is. Jesus is on the, uh, going through. He's healing people. They ask him. Um, on the Sabbath day. He's doing all these healings. This is us on the Sabbath day. So now they're following him. Out of all the people that he's teaching, and here it is, you have the Jewish leaders, the religious uh, doctrine, knowing the scriptures, and here it is, how is it that their hearts are not pricked? How is it? 
how can how can it be that nobody's out of all the people that Jesus is speaking to, how is it that they are so resistful? And this is why I'm saying when it goes to the deceitfulness of the heart, is above all things is wicked. The heart, man, that's a bad thing. You don't even know it probably at times when it when you are that my made up mind that you are fixed on what you have decided that you are not going to do, that you are fixed your mind on, that you are not going to go about this is my ways of doing it. I'm always going to do it. And you declare something like that on yourself. I, I always told my, I tell my kids and I tell my wife, I say, man, I don't ever try to put a finalize on certain things that I would never, I would never, I would never, no, you know what? I don't put it past myself. I know how wicked I am. Ooh, if I, if, I know how wicked I am. That was a flash on me. I'm sorry. I know. I, there's so many things I know I've been forgiven for, you know. But so when it comes down to it, he's healing people. Now, they're trying to set him up. So here we're going to go into uh, verse 10 of 12. I'm, setting, I'm trying to set it up. So, and behold, there was a man which was, uh, had a hand, his hand withered. And they asked him. He didn't ask them. They asked him because they're trying to set him up. So they asked him saying, is it lawful to, be, to heal? Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days? that they might accuse Jesus for that what he's doing, right? Because they know he's doing this all the time. So, and then he said unto, the, uh, said unto them, what man shall there be among you that shall not, uh, have one sheep? And if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? So here it is. We know man and animal, what is more value, Right? What's more value? But they, this is, this is why I start off when it said, when I asked, what is the worst sin? Because we all have different views of what we think is the worst sin. And here it is, their mindset. They didn't took this to heart to where it is. They teach it. And now it becomes tradition. It becomes a law within the people because they are the leaders. They are the leaders. And now they're saying on the Sabbath day, it ain't even good to heal somebody who is a man, even that of, they will say, the seed of Abraham that they would have a problem seeing that person getting help. I mean, where do they want them to go to get help, right? If they go somewhere else and get the help, they want to declare it, it's of Beelzebub. It's, and I'm jumping around, but it, it's, it's of someone else to discredit that it's the glory of God that gets the glory for the miracles that has been done. Ain't nobody else doing miracles. Only God can. Only God, but here it is, their rejection in their hearts, they have shown that they can't even receive those miracles or his words. Ain't nothing more powerful than the word of God. And I stand in witness in that. You know, we coming up from all walks of life, and you telling me there's no way that some of these, their hearts couldn't even be pricked, and they have the word, and they, as far as the Old Testament, they have the word of God, and you talking about the testimonies? You're talking about the testimonies. You're talking about the, the Red Sea drying up, right? You're talking about the miracles that, they, that was naturally done in their eyes. And they couldn't even believe in that. And even with the, all the scripture they have, they voided it. So how is it that man can void that type of words of life? How can it? So here it is in, on the Sabbath. They, they have an issue. Jesus knows it. He heals the man on the Sabbath. He says, how, how, much, how much then a, much a man, a man, much then a, a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Is it lawful to do well on the Sabbath days? Can we see that? It's almost like, man, ain't the obvious still obvious? Is good still good? Is bad still bad? And you look in this world right now, man, how they flipped it on his head. They have flipped it on his head. When it comes down to when they say something is good, it's bad to them. When it's something bad, it's okay, it's good to them. And this is something that we have the mindset that they are teaching our kids. They are teaching uh, immoral type teaching here in this, in this world that we live in now. That's why we can look at it, how wicked it is. This is man's heart on display. It's, it's on display showing us what it is that's in the heart of man. And the rules, the laws, the things that they let kids go by with the gender. Yeah, come on, they making choices. They, they change their mind within a matter of minutes. Kids do. I mean, and we saying, you know what you want. No. I mean, some grown folk don't even know what they want, to be honest. I mean, we battle with our own selves. So, so here it is. He still, this is one day. Please get this, this example. I, I, maybe, I, maybe I'll draw it the way in my own study. So let's go to uh, Joshua 
what's it, 10? I want to go to Joshua 10. And, I, and this is more so probably even to the point of discussion. Or I, I would say probably not be able to do the discussion, but, but I kind of want to hear some people's thought on what it may mean, but maybe it's, it changes the, the lesson in some matter. Uh, Joshua, I think I said 10, and I think it's 13. Here it is. Uh, let me get there. Why am I doing it? Joshua 10, right? I'm going to try to bring it all together. But 10, 13. I may have to. Is it 10, 13? No, I'm not. That's, that's not it. It's jo- yeah, it is 10. Why am I? Okay. All right. I was studying out my other Bible yesterday. So my mindset of how, okay, this is on the right side of my other Bible. Anyway, so let's go from, let's do 12. Joshua 10, 12. It says, then spake Joshua to the Lord, uh, to the Lord. No, I don't want that. Yes, I do want 12. Then Joshua, then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of, of Israel, he said, Joshua said, in the sight of Israel, son, stand, stand thou still upon Gil- Gilbeon, and took thou moon in the valley of Azara, Azala, Azala, Azara, or whatever. Yeah. So, so here it is. So let's go 13. And the sun stood still, and moon stayed until the, the people, I'm going to have to take this off. This is all in my way. To the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is it is it not is not this written in the book of Josh uh, Josh Joshua? So the Lord so the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day, right? And so, and verse fourteen is really where I kind of I was trying to give the layout of it. It says, and there was no day like that before it or after it, and the Lord hearkened. Unto the voice of man, of man, for the Lord fought for Israel. So it, it seems to me, on verse 14, it says, And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened, that he hearkened to Joshua in the sense of that he said, Sun, stand still, moon, stay in your place. What's, what's, is that not something that makes you think? Why is it that he's saying that he didn't hearken, that he never hearkened to a man, unto the voice of a man like that? Joshua asked for something beyond, right? He asked for something beyond to make the sun stay in this place and the moon to stay in this place. And now it comes down to this being recorded as pretty much the longest day, that it stayed up for a whole day. What is the purpose of that? Now, for Joshua... He wanted to eliminate all the kings. I, I don't want to go into the, it was the five kings. But he didn't want that day to get by. It's the urgency. It's the urgency that he knew in this moment you have to finish certain things. You can't leave it untied. You can't leave it undone for the next day. Because there are certain things that you have to have done in the moment, in the time, right then. You can't leave it undone. Right? So as I'm thinking of it as the, one of the longest days, here it is, Jesus, in back to Matthew 12. In 13, chapter 13, here it is, Jesus is on a mission. God has an urgent care, all right? It's an urgent care as we have seen in emergency rooms and so. This is open 24 hours. Here it is, this is God's urgent care, knowing what is the need and the care of the people who are actually hearing his teaching and the healing and the miracles that he's displaying just now in this. Earth. So here it is, he knows he has to complete certain things. So, so here it is in, back in Matthew Back in Matthew 12, he's still going through healing. I want to make one more example of the Matthew 12. On the Sabbath day, he healed the man with the withered hand. And uh, verse 15, 12, 15, but when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from them because they had a problem when he did it on the Sabbath day. They took counsel. They went to go try to find a way to destroy Jesus. But when, when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. 
He healed them all, right? Okay, so Jesus is on a mission. Now he speaks about certain prophecy when it comes down to Elijah. And then now it comes down to verse 22. Then, then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him. And so much that the blind and dumb both speck and saw. And all the people were amazed. And so, um, so now, look, it said, all the people were amazed and said, is not this the son of David? But then here comes the Pharisees. Think of the parable of the sword. I know I haven't got to the point of where it is that Jesus started teaching about the sword. So it says, it says, then the Pharisees, verse 24, but when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow doeth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of demons. Why would they say that right there? Because they know there's people, and the devil knows, right? He knows if they take that to heart, if they get that in, it's getting them farther away from this false teaching of the things that the Pharisees have been trying to keep them in control of, right? So here it is. They, they are doing the works of what the, par the parable that Jesus is going to speak about in 13, already in 12. He's telling them some of the things that is laying out. So now I want to try to go to, and it's more in that verse 12. But still understand this is still the same day. So verse 13, or chapter 13, verse 1. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. To me, like I said, I want this thing to come to life when I'm reading. Here it is. It's to me, it's a long day. He comes out the house. It's not rushing like he was since he was from the time when he woke up. It's not like he's youthful and he got all this great, great energy, right? Because it talks about how he was tired and hungry at times. So, and then it says, a great multitude were gathered together with him, unto him. So that he went into a ship, sat, and the whole multitude stood on the seashore. Look at here. Miracles is easy. For him, for God. I'm sorry, I put it that way. Miracles are easy. So, for when it comes down to... That's, I guess I'll go there now, too. Let's go to uh, Luke 5. And I'm, I'm almost done with some of the jump-off scriptures. I'm almost done I'm trying to get paint my mind, my process, my thought process. I should have put markers in my Bible so I can jump like this. So Luke 5. And this is goes about when it, when, um, the men brought the man sick of posy on the bed, let him down through the thing, let him down through the, the house. Uh, am I right there? 17? Yeah, 17. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And it says, and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there was always, there always the Pharisees and scribes everywhere he go. You ever seen them? You ever seen somebody follow you behind you and they, all they got is negative things? Huh? All they doing is following behind Jesus, never taking in the teaching, never taking in the miracles, never believing. And then here it is. They showing up everywhere he at. Uh, Pharisees were the Pharisees and doctors of the law. The doctors of the law. These are the top end guys, man. So sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Present to heal them. They didn't want it. Present to heal them. They needed the healing, but they didn't know it. So then here it is. It goes about, I'm going to try to briefly brief it. So about the man that's uh, sick of posy, they, they let him down. Let's go to verse 22 maybe. And it says, but when Jesus perceived their thoughts, because God knows the thoughts of man and the hearts of man, and he answered, said unto them, what reason ye in your hearts, whether is it easier, is it easier to say, thy sins be forgiven you thee, or to say, rise up and walk? So he's telling you, he's saying, it's easy to do the miracles. We've seen it in chapter 12. They do, he's doing miracles. He's laying it all out. That's easy. People, a lot of them do believe it. A lot of the, those who follow, they believe the miracles, other than the Pharisees and the leaders. So... They believe the, uh, but now when it comes down to sin, that's a hard take in. You know why? Can you see the sin? You can see the, you can see the flesh, the operations, the, the, the obvious the, is the flesh that shows the sin. But can you see sin? Can you see it? So here it is, somebody, it's as in somebody who can just lie. But if you ain't got the evidence or you don't have the evidence to show that that person lied, 
They can stick by their guns. So it's unseeable. Here it is. It's unseeable. So they, he's saying it's easier to say pick up thy bed and walk. Or is it to say thy sins are forgiven? But because now this is a greater work. The greater work is now dealing with the man's heart. All right? So when he says it's easier, what is easier? To say your sins are, or to, uh, that your sins are forgiven or to pick up thy bed and walk? So now it brings me into this place where I want to kind of get to in Matthew 13. It says, it goes about where now, verse 1, it talks about he now steps out. He's dealing with a different group of people. They're not coming looking for miracles. They're on the seaside. Now they're listening to his words. They're on the shore. They're standing waiting for something that God's going to give them that changes their life. And these are the, the changes that's from within. That's not something that somebody can tell you. Can you prove that you got the Holy Ghost? As in to give them the evidence? Are you able to give people the evidence that you are spirit-filled? Are you able to? Because some people, you can say it, you can live it, but can they see it? And I'm talking about because it's not seeable in that matter. It's not seeable. So, so here it is. They are coming for something else. He knows this is the greater work. This long day, this is a long day. He's dealing with the sword. Now he says, in verse 3, and he spake of many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sword went forth to sow. And when the, he sowed, some seeds fell up by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. And some fell upon stony places where they had not much uh, earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no, no de deepness of earth, and when so the and when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit: some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. That's a miracle. So we are living miracles. I know we say this a lot. We are living miracles when we are walking in the light that God has gave, given us to us, that we have come into the truth, that here it is that we are here today knowing and acknowledging that we have one Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and here it is that there's only one way to God. So here it is. We are here. We are miracles, but the people can't see it. The world can't see it like that. The power that we have within us, the investment that we put, the investment that we are here on today, knowing that it's not something that we can just lay out and tell everybody what reason why I'm still here through our experience. But the sore, here's the, the sore goes, he said the parable, the sore, um, the seed. The sore is anybody. Anybody's the sore. Those who are working and expecting God's growth, the growth in God. The seed is unlimited. That's the word of God. He's throwing it anywhere. We worried about it falling on, on the rocky ground. But it's the man's heart, which is, God is, uh, which is Jesus teaching about the sore, about the grounds. He's looking at all the, the things that man goes through, the matter of the heart. So here it is. God's dealing with the man's heart. What is harder, miracles or the heart of man? We are dealing with, he's dealing with a long day, dealing with the heart of man, the issues of life. And we all have it. And that's the thing where I want to get at. It's like we all have these issues. Some of us have some, and I have, I'll go to refer to my kids. My son and my daughter, they go at it. My 11-year-old and my 8-year-old go at it constantly. They just go at it, as they say, cats and dogs, right? So one of them uh, hit the other one and then run off. And then he said, oh, that hurt. And he, he said, that didn't hurt. That didn't hurt that bad. That didn't hurt. I barely hit you. I barely touch you. And I, and I have to teach you. I say, you don't know what hurt somebody else worse. You, you thinking, I didn't barely hit you. I barely hit you. How you going? I say, you can't judge the matters of that person's pain. You can't judge that. So here it is. It's like teaching some of my little ones. When I look at it, you can't sit there and say one sin is greater than the other uh, as opposed to somebody else. Because somebody takes it a little bit different. Some people have different perspectives of what life is. So when we all, that we are here, we all been through something in life. We have lost things. We lost loved ones. We lost many things. If anything, we know about loss. You lost time. You lost age. You lost years. And here it is. We look at it from a standpoint that when we're dealing with man's heart, everybody's coming from a different perspective. 
And God is saying, you are responsible for the ground that where the word of God can actually land. As much as bad been done to you, as much as we can blame somebody else, you are responsible for your ground. The ground that you allow to set to heart. You are the one that's got to get up and move on. You're the one that got to go doing some searching. My brother, he's in town, and he asked me, he said, because I said, man, I, I got a lot of things to do. And I told him, I said, I said, he said, well, I said, I have to teach. I said, that's why I have to come to church. I got things at the house, a pipe bus, I, I, I have to deal with. And he said, man, do you really have to go? I said, yeah, I committed to it. I have to go. I have to. He said, you, do you really? I said, I know I have a choice. I know I have a choice. But my conviction is saying I have to be here, right? So he said, well, I'm going to ask you, when you teach, is it relative to the people? I said, I believe so. The word of God is related to everything. And so we all coming from so many different walks of life that it's related. We are responsible for all the grounds that, that the enemy sows. Sometimes it's just life itself. We deal with just in general, right? So what are you giving place and what are you allowing to be placed on the altar of God in your own heart? If you're allowing certain things on the burnt, as it would be in the Old Testament, burnt sacrifice, the burnt altar for, for the Lord, everything shouldn't just be set up on that. There are certain things you have to guard your heart on, as Scripture tells us. And so we all come in from different hurts, different pains. So as it is when the teaching is going, it's relative to the fact that, hey, I've, I've gone through some hard things, but I'm standing here because I put some trust in, in God. When I have to deal with some depression, I didn't know how real that was, but I know he's preparing me for it. I ain't going to go too deep into that, but, but oh, maybe I will. I'll speak just a little bit on it. It was when Evangelist Walker was up here a long time ago, and she was teaching, and something that she jumped out and she said within her own experience. And that one word jumped out and said, and it was about depression. She said depression. And that one word stamped right upon my head. I was like, okay, what is that? So I do want to do some searching about it. So when it went down to somewhat of the searching, I looked up David and some of his situation that he had to go through, right? And he had many issues to where he set himself to where he was by himself looking like a madman in the, in the camp of the Philistines. And then they, I mean, he's doing all these dramatic type things. He's in a cave with other rejected men. So here it is. It's like, man, the, 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 when you are, how you say, depressed, there's certain things, but only God can bring you out of that. That was the searching I had to do for my own self. I had to do some seeking. I had to sit there and keep myself consistently in the word. And I'm not saying, I know that's an easy, like I say, cliche. We get cliche in church. It's easy. Well, you stay in the word. You pray. You got to go with it. You fast, son. You got to, Yeah, I know. That, that, is, that is the answer. Sometimes it's, can you stay consistent doing it? Can, can you actually, and you got to have help from others. Lou, my brother, he helped me. And that was when he had opened it up after I really went through it. And then I said, man, how do you deal with it, man? And he says, man, it's a day at a time. It's a day at a time. I'm not saying that he had it. I'm not saying that. It was something I was discussing with him. But it was something to relate to. And it, it opened it up for me to where it is I can be open more to the word of God. That would, other than that, I couldn't break up some of the things that I was dealing with. Not on my own. I couldn't break that stuff up. There are certain things that have to become real, and that was the word of God that had to become real in it. So we all allow certain things in life, issues of life, that can take us away, make us in disbelief, and we fight it, and here it is, God saying, you're responsible for your soil. Are you allowing God to speak to you? Are you allowing for him to use you? When it comes down to when there are certain options that you have, you have an option. You can go left or right. Are you always going left? Are you trying to take the easier way? Are you trying to avoid some of the hardship? That's what we hear. It's life. Life is what it is, and we have to take it for what it is. So when I look at it from a standpoint, the parable of the sower, and I know Jesus kind of get more into explaining it as far as the rocky ground, the, uh, the, the, um, the ones that fall on stony, stony places. And we all have this type of issue, like I said before. We all have this issue where it is that we can take up borders, put up borders that God can't get through. And that's why I said when it comes down to the Pharisees, the scribes, here it is, they had an opportunity. They had an opportunity to change their hearts, their lives, 
They had the opportunity to be healed, and they rejected it. So what's, what's the, what, what is the matters of the heart? What's the matters? What's the matter of your heart? What is it that you need God to do that you know that if it hadn't been for him that you wouldn't even be here this moment? There are certain testimonies that we can all share. As a matter of fact, I'll share this one as well. My brother just told me yesterday. He said that um, when, before he, he was going to play basketball, he's given his experience, he's going to play basketball overseas. And he was talking about a situation that he's seen before it happened. And, and he said year, a year later or something when he went overseas, it was a certain stretch that he did that it was in his vision. And he said, because he said, I didn't know it at the time. I never knew it what he, that vision was at first. And then when it came to fruition, now listen, he said, man. So he said, that experience, he said, nobody can take it away from me, that God is real. And that's what he's saying. Nobody can take that away from me. Nobody can take that experience away from me to where it is. I will always draw back to that. If it gets hard, if times get hard, I'll always draw back to that experience I had with him, that you know that God is real. You can't take that part away from me. It becomes real to you. So do you have that stony heart? Do you have that, that uh, what's the other one, where it, don't fall, it falls on the wayside and you don't have the depth, deepness to where it is, the earth, earth and the, the deepness to get into the soil, that the word of God that is more powerful than anything, more powerful than anything, and here it is, the man's heart, because it deals with the will of man. God doesn't make you a robot. He didn't create you. He creates you to have a will. You have a will. You have a choice. So he gives you that. But he's saying, here it is, the will of man, the matters of heart, and he'll allow you to make that decision, your own choice. And it's, it's, that, it's, it's sad to say that many have, and, and, and you can look at it from church experiences. They'll say, I tried that thing, man. I, I, you heard people out there in the world. I tried. I tried church. I tried it, man. Did you really? What happened? It's the people. The people in the church heard me. It's the stuff that happened. They felt they'd been lied on. They look at somebody else's life. They say they're hypocrites. And so here it is. They will sit there and judge that as that's God. Mm-mm. You don't get away with that. You're responsible. You're responsible. We all have that choice. It's the will of man. So here it is. We, or your own will, rather. The will of man. And you have a choice. So where did you allow in the word of God to drop? I come through these doors. I come into these doors with the mindset I have to get fixed before I even come through these doors. So when I'm getting my mindset preparation, my preparation of the heart, when I'm about to offer unto God that of my worship, my praise, I want to make it genuine. I want to make it true. There's no, I don't want to be thinking I'm hiding any sins from God. So I repent. So as I'm, as I'm offering something to him, I got to make sure my ground is good as I'm offering unto the Lord, my God. And so how many people we come into the church, I put it like this. I, God kind of amused me, amused me sometimes when, when he puts some illustrations in. Who goes, who goes home, who's at home, have this big meal laid out in front of you. You eat, you're full, you got your dessert, you're full. And then you say, hey, let's. Let's go to this restaurant, man. Let's go over to Papa Do's or whatever it be. Let's go sit down and let's go get a meal. How you going to eat still? How you going to still eat? Some of us come through the house of God full, full of our own selves. We are full. We coming in these doors, and you think anything going to get to you? You think, you, you think the word going to penetrate through you? You full. You ain't cleaned yourself. You up in there and you thinking you got it all right. You okay. You, you, you fine with how that, eh, I, I can deal with this. You taking all the burdens on your own shoulders. And so here it is. You come in the house of God full. The scripture says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Do you see God's hand or are you, are you listening? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't see God's evident, uh, what you call visible hand. He said, humble yourself. How many people come in the house of God unhumbled? And how regular is this now, in a sense? I'm hoping my <laughs> righteous indignation don't come up like, but uh, how, how many of us come into the house full of ourselves? We got it all together. Can't nobody tell us nothing. And we sitting there thinking that God ain't judging us for that, what we coming in this house? God's house is still a spiritual house. 
It's still a holy house. I still deem it as holy. When I, and I deem my God to be holy. So when we're looking at it, when you come into the house of God, are you full of yourself? Full of the things that God can't even get to you? You talking about man's heart? Here it is. It said, like I said in Joshua, he said, and, and that day, it never was. Never was that he hearkened to the, man, uh, the heart of the voice of a man. Hey, I, if I really want to go into the depth of uh, some of that, I really want to, but this ain't the setting for it. But as far as in the sense God is dealing with man's heart, he's saying what is easier? What is easier, the miracles or to say your sins are forgiven? So Jesus seeing this whole layout, I'm finishing up. Jesus from chapter 12 to verse chapter 13, he's making sure he don't have any unloosed ties of that he's teaching the kingdom unto the people who are actually now looking for more than a miracle. They're looking for genuine, true change that where it is that the, the gospel, the truth, and here it is that the, the principles of God, when it comes down to the kingdom that Jesus is teaching, he's saying this is a different way to live. This is different. You don't have to live like these Pharisees who is keeping you under bondage and control. And he's saying, here it is, take this to heart. Take this to heart. My words, wisdom, truth. Let these things change you. Live from the inside out rather than the outside in. Don't let everything move you from a place that it is that you are now starting to always question God and the things that, that your life has already been. You don't have to question God on certain things. There's things that you know. I know God is real. Do I have to keep going back to my uh, testimony? If you want me to, I'll do it. Just if you need that proof. But it comes down to where we know that we have to have the word of God that's going to genuinely change each of us. And that's why the heart of man, which it says, is deceitfully above all. And we are dealing with man's heart and we see that's what's displayed in the world right now all the laws that passes and so on that they try to do but here it is we deal with our own hearts that you are responsible so that you can make a change in where you are everybody there shouldn't there shouldn't be certain things happening in your how you say area where you are where you at your, on your work on your at the store there are certain things because you should have a mindset you should have a spiritual, uh, how you say, antennas up in a sense, that you are prayerful, that you don't let certain things come about. It, everything shouldn't just happen around you. Everything shouldn't just be able to uh, take full, full form in your presence. People should have problems with you. <laughs> I mean, you walk in light unless you're in the dark, and they, they like, hey, come on in. Nobody can see each other in this matter. So I, I, I know... I have like two more minutes. If you got any things that you want to comment, question, or to speak out on, anybody? As my boss man, Bueller. <laughs> Anything? I just want to. I just want us to know that when it comes down to us offering to God that. As, as easy it is to say it's good to be here and we can use scripture and say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, but let it be all be true. Let these things of the matters of your own heart that you make sure that you do more self-evaluations of the things that you are uh, dealing with as far as your own personal issues. So if that is all, I have things I got twisted up on, but but just to know. Father, we're grateful, Lord, that it's to be here on today. We take it not for granted, your love, your kindness, your mercies, your long suffering towards us. And God, let us even hear that of your voice, that as we may be changed from within, and that we'll live a life that is pleasing unto you, that as we honor you, Lord God, for with all that we have within us, God, grant us favor, even under the voice in this house. Lord, grant us this favor, Lord God, that as we need as you know the needs of our, each of us, Lord God. Let us hear that of your voice, your words, that is comforting and that is light. Display that of your love. Display even, let us be witness of your manifesting love in this house on today. And let words be spoken great of, thy great, of your great name. So we give you and bless your holy name. 
That guaranteed name is Jesus. We pray. Amen. Oh, and I guess now that's the point of offering. I, I know of the old school way. Bring your money. <laughs> or, or leave an offering. Um, what is it, PayPal? PayPal. PayPal. Vivified. And cash out. God's house church. Come. <laughs> Come enter into the house and, and also try to have the expectation on what, what God can do, even in this 